skip the, the first thing out of the way, just the, the whole talk about the captaincy. Uh, was it a surprise to you that uh, Kyle was going to come out and say um, that there isn't going to be a captain? No, not really. I think um, you know, the way he's handling it, um, you know, with, with patience and making sure that it's the right guy, the right person, and uh, you know, it's obviously a big honor to, to wear the, the C, and uh, especially for a team uh, like the Toronto Maple Leafs and original six teams. So, um, I definitely think the way that they're handling it and going about it uh, and the whole process is uh, the right way to do it. You guys make the playoffs back-to-back -back years without a captain. And can there be an advantage in the way that things are kind of run where there is a leadership group but no one's actually wearing the seat? I mean, I think everybody's leaders in their own way. So we've got a young core of guys, guys that have been here for a while too. And, you know, I don't think you really need a letter to, to lead by example or to speak up in the room. I think everybody is pretty comfortable and close with each other that um, when something needs to be said, it's going to be said. You've never actually been a captain, right? No. And that's partially because you've always been playing up a level, I imagine. Um, have you worn an A before? Yeah, yeah I wore an A at um, the NTDP. Uh, I wore an A on Juniors. So, like you said, I've usually been the like, younger guy on the team growing up. Um, and then obviously playing in Europe, playing in pro, it's, you know, again, younger guy on the team, so uh, it's been a couple times. Entering your third season, are you kind of growing into a leadership role, though, on the team? Yeah, I felt that way even during, like, at the end of my, my first season. Um, you just get more comfortable, obviously, you have the respect of the older guys in the locker room, and, um, you know, more of a guy that leads by example, not, uh, you know, too much to be said on my part, but, um, you know, I definitely feel more and more comfortable every year, but you know, I think that, that kind of started uh, at the end of the first year. So what are the expectations for the Toronto Maple Leafs in your mind this season? Is, it, is the Stanley Cup really the, the end-all, uh, be-all for you guys? Absolutely. I think that's, that's everybody's goal going into the season uh, is to make the playoffs and obviously get to the ultimate goal. So, um, you know, for us, you know, I think people, a lot of people forget that like, we're going into our third year, we're 20, 21 years old, and uh, they put all these expectations on us, and I don't necessarily think it's a, it's a bad thing, because you know, we have high expectations for ourselves as well. All of us individually want to take a step forward. Uh, as a team, we want to take a step forward. Um, you know, we've obviously you know, added some key guys like John and some others that are obviously going to help us. Is it fair, like with the addition of John, that you guys kind of went from being a team that's really good to Okay, now you're legit Stanley Cup contenders. I think it's fair, but I mean, we still have a lot to prove. We haven't really proven anything. It's been two years we made the playoffs, and it's been two years that it's the same results. So, um, you know, they they can do all the odds and all that stuff, but in the end, like, we haven't uh, we haven't proved anything. We still got a lot of work to do. What would excite you about kind of adding a guy like John Tavares? Uh, obviously, it's. It's, it's pretty obvious that he's a, a top talent, but where do you see him helping the most? I think there's a lot, not only myself, but you know, a lot of other young guys and you know, guys on the team coming from him. Just the way he carries himself, you know, he's very professional on and off the ice. Uh, he's very focused, the way he, um, you know, he takes care of his body, uh, his nutrition, all that stuff that um, you know, goes into being a top player. Uh, something that a lot of these young guys can, can really learn from him. He's a good guy to pick his brain on different things. Do you wonder how it's gonna all shake up, like in terms of who's playing with who, minutes on ice and things like that. Uh, it's, it's great that you guys have a lot of talent, but it's about finding, I guess, everyone's kind of a good spot for everyone. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, thought about it a little bit. Um, you know, in the end, do you kind of see how things shake out? I mean, uh, we're not the ones making the lines or throwing the lines out there, or power play or anything, so. Um, you know, that's ultimately the, the coach's decision. Um, you know, you go about your day the same way. You want to get out there, obviously, as much as possible. But um, you know, it's it's all about winning in the end. And we've got to play a player that can help us win. You expect to see William Nylander uh, first day camp? I don't know. Um, I'm not really. Uh, I'm not involved in his <laughs> talks. I'm not even involved in my own. So yeah. um, I don't know. It, his contract situation. Obviously, it's going to affect possibly uh, the whole makeup of the team, and then it's the first domino to fall uh, with yourself and Mitch coming next. Um, how important is it that you guys, Kanea, all sign long-term contracts with this team, but also kind of make it fit where you're not hamstrunging or hamstringing kind of 
management where they can't find those secondary pieces around mm -hmm. it? Is there any kind of talk amongst yourselves, kind of, um, I don't want to say quote unquote, like do the right thing, but making sure that you guys can still afford players that we have? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's what we have agents for, and, and them talking with the management and, and really sorting that out and making sure that. Um, you know, you, you keep all the pieces of the puzzle, and um, you know, like you said, we have a lot of a lot of young, talented players, and um, you know, you definitely want to find that uh, kind of that medium. But um, you know, that's what we have our agents for. Let them handle that, so we can just go out and play hockey, and you know, obviously, uh, you know, help the Toronto Maple Leafs. In regards to Nylander, you've played I guess back-to-back -back seasons now with them. What what works so well between you guys, and what makes him such a dangerous player? I think we just have that chemistry, I guess. Um, you know, similar to a lot of other guys, like just like Mitch had with uh, JBR and, and Bozy and myself, uh, Willie, um, Hyman, you know, and then I think we just have that chemistry where we kind of know where each other's at. Um, you know, we work a lot after practice on different spots and, and shots and um, talk a lot on the bench during games on, on what we think we see and, and what we think that we can adjust with and, and help work. but. Um, you know, he's definitely a talented player, he's got a lot of skill, um, can shoot the puck, he can find the ice, he can skate well, and, uh, he, he thinks the game well, so you know, for myself, uh, I really enjoy playing with him. Does it work particularly well with you because he's a winger, but he plays as a, like, maybe a pass first winger? Like he's, a, he's a really good playmaker in that regard? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, he, he finds me all, all over the ice, I feel like we, you know, we connect on a lot of plays and can find each other, but you know, he's, he's more of a pass first guy and I'm obviously more of a shoot first guy, so that whole uh, kind of scenario kind of works, but um, you know, at the same time, I, I kind of feel like it can also be vice versa where I find him because he can also shoot the puck as, as good as anybody. It's funny because I was talking to Connor McDavid um, earlier and he said that he's still trying to find that consistent line mate and really it, it's been a luxury for you that you've kind of found that guy um, in, in William just uh, that you've been able to click with because you look around the league and some of the more successful guys that are like challenging for the Art Ross Trophy, um, they have that guy with them, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's Stamkos and Kucherov or whoever. Um, it is, how important is that, having that kind of, that one-two kind of tandem? Yeah, I think it's really important. I mean, you see if there's a lot of really good duos in the league and um, especially in, in our team and our organization, we have a lot of really, really good young players. So on any given which day, first line to fourth, like you got skilled guys that can make plays, that can find you, that can finish, and, um, and I think it's a testimony to obviously the Toronto Maple Leafs and what they've been able to do with drafting kids and involving them and uh, yeah. putting guys in the situations where they can succeed. The, the injuries kind of robbed us of figuring out where you might have ended up in the standings in terms of the scoring race and all that, but do you have set goals as to, like you'd like to compete eight, whether it's for Rock and Richard or for the Art Ross Trophy? What, what do you see kind of happening this season if, if you do stay healthy? Yeah, I have set goals for myself. I don't really like to share them with anybody else, but um, you know, that's, that's kind of for myself personally. Uh, but first and foremost, like I want to help the team win. I want to win a Stanley Cup, and you know, I think that comes above all else.